This tutorial covers using a flame sprite component and rotating it with the effects. The documentation has several effects that can be applied to a sprite component in Flame and Flutter. We're going to use the rotate effect example in this tutorial. Create a new project to get started. Store your sprites in assets images. Make sure your pubspec.yaml file has that as well as the newest version of Flame 1.0. Put the sprite into the assets folder. I've deleted most of the code. I've imported the flame game.dart and I've created a empty class my game that extends base game. So I'm going to set a variable above the run app for game that should pass it my game, not base game as shown here. And pass that game parameter over to the game widget. This will start the game. Initially, it's going to be a blank screen. We're going to create a sprite component called ship that will eventually will load the sprite into there from the graphics. To load the sprite into your game, you're going to need to use the onload method, which is built into base game. So it's a future. Uh, it's going to return nothing, but because because it is using async await to make sure the sprite is loaded, it has to be a future. So just go future void on load. Uh, it's async, and then we can write the code within the curly brackets after that. So initially this is not running because on line six, I need to pass it my game instead of base game, but I'll fix that later. In the onload method, I like to put a print statement just to help me to see that this uh, method is being run and we're going to add some additional uh, properties to the ship which is a sprite component i'm going to use the cascade operators which are these two dots the first one we need to actually load the sprite so we're going to use sprite which is a keyword property that's from sprite component equals await which is from dark load sprite which is from flame and within the uh, load sprite, you're passing it the name of the file, which must be in assets images and must that directory must be in your pubspec.yaml file. After you load the, the ship instead of the properties, you will need to load the ship into the game itself. So again, I have an error uh, at this point where on line six, I should, I should set the game equal to my game. But let's set up the properties first and I'll, I'll fix that error later. Uh, so first, let's set the size. I'm using cascade operators again, the two dots. The size property is part of sprite component, passing it a vector. The ship will be 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Next, I'll add the position of the ship onto the screen. And I'll also set that to 100 pixels by 100 pixels just to get started here and so get something appearing on the screen. Uh, if you haven't done so already, now change the uh, game variable so that it's actually receiving my game and not base game. And then now the ship will appear on, on the screen and we can see where how the properties are all set up. All right. Okay. The ship has finally appeared because I've remembered to use the right class. And we just need to get the, the ship moving using the effects package in flame effects uh, is a separate package i have auto import so if you haven't if it don't have auto import you need to import flame slash effects dot dart you'll need to pass it the angle of rotation so it's in radians and uh, half a half a rotation of 180 degrees is pi 360 degrees is 2 pi so you can kind of play around with maybe pi or 2 pi because it's easy to work with. The value of pi is a constant that's in the dart math package. So I'm also going to import dart math so I can use the pi constant. The duration parameter will, it, it's the duration which it takes to complete uh, the angle. So initially the angle will be pi, which is half of a full rotation. So to get it working, import dart math. And after you import dart math, um, 
the sprite will now be able to rotate. Uh, we haven't set the anchor yet, and you'll see in a moment what this means. So when you hot uh, restart it, you can see that it's going to be rotating around the uh, upper left hand corner. But this is easy to fix. You just need to set the anchor as a in the cascade operator. It's a property of the sprite component. And there's uh, the value anchor dot center. It's part of a flame. And with that, it should be rotating around the center. Now we have it. That's pretty cool, huh? So it's going to be a 180 degree because I'm just using a single pi. And if you recall in radians, pi is half of the circle and two pi is a full circle. So we'll, we'll just use this pi for now. So it'll give you a better idea of how this thing is uh, operating. It's a little bit easier to see for the example. You can adjust the size and speed of the rotation, um, the size of the sprite, also the position of the sprite. I think I'll move it a little bit more into the center so that it's a little easier to see. And let's just set it to 2 pi so you get the full rotation here. To get it to rotate infinitely, there is a, a property is infinite, and you can just set it to true. If you want to rotate it in the opposite direction, you just multiply it times the negative value. So if it's, uh, for example, negative 2, it will rotate a full rotation in the opposite direction. Again, if you want to get it to stop after a certain number of rotations, you would set is infinite to false there. If you want it to keep rotating again and again in a uh, non-stop circle, then you set is infinite to true. Uh, this could become important when you want to use the curves. There's a lot of different types of animation curves. Uh, so we're going to select one of them here for bounce in out. And if you select a uh, hot restart, you can see that it has this pretty cool animation for bouncing in and out. So you can see that you might want to set it infinite to false for different types of effects so that, you know, if it's uh, slowing down or speeding up at different types of rates, you might want to just have it kind of eventually uh, decelerate until it stopped moving. Thanks to the awesome Flame community for helping me out with comments on this YouTube channel as well as getting help on their Discord channel, which is fantastic. I have 25 videos on Flutter Flame tutorials using Flutter and Flame 1.0. Subscribe to the channel for further updates. Have a great day.